Okay, in this video we're going to be doing reflections. Um, I'm going to show you two ways to do it. I'm going to show you the rule, and I'm also going to show you how to do it by just using your critical thinking. And, um, and it doesn't include the paper on this one because these are really easy to do even without the paper. So just keep in mind you could use the paper trick if you want, just like we did with the rotations, but you don't have to. So let's look at number one. Number one has already graphed our triangle, and it gives us the points right here at which it's been graphed. So it says then determine the coordinates of the reflected image. So it wants us to list the coordinates. So we can do that. So let's say for A and for B and for C. So let's list our coordinates real quick. And A is going to be 1, 2, 1, 2. So we're over 2, up 2. And then B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we got 5, 4. And C is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. So 5, 1. So now we just got to write the new coordinates of the image. Now we could use the algebraic rule if we wanted to get A prime and B prime and our C prime but I think it's easier on this one if we just use this method of just crit thinking critically so let me show you what I mean so if C we're gonna flip it over the x-axis right so when we talk about flipping over the x-axis I'm gonna highlight it we're gonna flip it over this axis right here so since we're gonna flip it over that axis what I would do is go to that axis and just see how far the point is from that axis in other words Here's the x-axis, and C is just one space away. So to rotate it, I mean to flip it over, or reflect it, I'm just going to go to C and go down one space away. Because I'm flipping over the x-axis, it's jumping over the x-axis. And that's going to be C prime. For B, it is 1, 2, 3, 4 away from it. Right, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's going to be B prime. For A, I'm going to line it up with A on the x-axis and it's 1, 2. So it's two units away, so 1, 2. And that's going to be A prime. And now I'm just going to connect it. So, I think that's the easiest way to do these. This is my new image. And this one was my old image. So now we just need to list the points, and we've answered the question. So let's go ahead and list the points. A prime, notice that it's still 2 on the x-axis, so it's still going to be 2. And that's the neat thing about these, is the numbers will stay the same, just the signs will change. So that's still going to be 5, 4, this is still going to be 5, 1. Now we just need to change the sign. All we did was y changed from being positive to being negative. So my y is going to go negative. Here, my y value changed from positive to negative. So that's going to go negative. And here, my y changed from positive to go negative. So, notice that these are, and I'm going to highlight them, that's A prime, that's B prime, and that's C prime. And I'm done. I've reflected my image, and I've figured out all my coordinates for my A, B, and C prime. So I think that's the easiest way to do this. So now let me show you how to do it just using the rule. All right, on this particular problem, let's take a look at number two. So on number two, I want you to keep in mind that we're going to do this by rule, and it's telling us to reflect um, over the y-axis. So whenever we reflect over the y-axis, and I'm going to write right here y-axis, we have a rule, and our rule is going to be x, y, and then we're going to have negative x, y, just like we had on our Cornell notes. And we're just going to use this rule for each one of these ordered pairs, and it's going to transform it into what we need so that we can reflect this. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start with a, so we're going to do point a, then we're going to do b, then we'll do c, and then we'll do d. So let's go ahead. We need to put our ordered pair for each one of those. 
luckily you don't even have to look at it because it tells you what the ordered pair is so that helps us a little bit we will have to do a little bit of math in here but not a whole lot so I'm gonna put all my parentheses okay so it says a is negative 1 2 so I'm gonna trust it it's telling me what it is negative 1 2 B is 2 negative 1 and I'm just getting that from up here and C is 5 2 and D is 2 5 so let's plug it into this formula. We're gonna, remember, we're gonna just like a translation, we're gonna use this part as the equation. So I got negative x, so I'm gonna put a negative sign. I'm gonna put parentheses because I'm gonna plug in my negative one, and then comma my y value. And for this one, I'm gonna put negative parentheses two, and then negative one. And then for the next one I'm gonna plug in for X so I'm gonna do negative and then have a 5 and plug in for Y and I'm gonna have my 2 and I guess I should put parentheses around all of them because we're plugging in a number for the letter and then on this one we have negative 2 comma 5 so when I say we're gonna do a little bit of math well we have to distribute these negative signs because anytime you plug in for a variable just like I plugged in a number for this x, we have to put it in parentheses. So since this negative is outside the parentheses, that's like saying a negative 1 times negative 1. So a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So my a prime is actually going to be positive 1 and then positive 2. My b prime is going to be a negative times a positive. So it's going to be negative 2, negative 1 and my c prime is going to be negative times 5 so negative 1 times 5 is just going to give me a negative 5 and a positive 2 and then I have a negative sign outside of this one so that one's going to change for d prime to negative 2 5 so I'm going to go ahead and kind of color these in a little bit to make them stand out so it's easy for me to graph it and these are all my primes of my new shape so now we just need to go ahead and graph them on this coordinate plane so let's take a look a prime is going to be 1 2 so over 1 up 2 that's a prime and then b prime would be negative 2 negative 1 so I'm going to go negative 2 negative 1 that's going to be b prime C prime will be negative 5, 2. So I'm going to go over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up to 1, 2. That's C prime. And then D prime is going to be negative 2, 5. So I'm going to go over 2, up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's going to be D prime. So with that in mind, I want you to go ahead and we're going to connect these points. And now we have our new image that's been reflected over the y axis. Now, for those of you who, who are thinking about the way that we did it that first time, I know you remember it. And you, you could be looking at it going, well, you know what? I think it would be easier just to do this with that critical thinking and say, oh, okay, here's my y-axis. My a is one point away, so I'm just going to be my a one point away on the other side. My c is one, two, three, four, five away, so I'm just going to go to y and count over five. One, two, three, four, five. My d on my y-axis is two points away, so I'm going to go ahead and just count two points away on the other side, and there's d prime. And my b is two units away so I'm going to count two units away on the other side and make B prime I, I still think that's the fastest way to do these but you do need to know how to use this algebraic rule just in case um, on the test it's asking you questions it just uses an algebraic rule so keep in mind the algebraic rule for a reflection for the over the y-axis is X and Y and you have this arrow and then it says is negative X and Y and I want you to remember that if you reflect over the x-axis, 
there's another rule and for the x-axis it's x and y and then you'll put x and negative y so those are the two different rules for reflections and every reflection you do is going to follow those two rules now go ahead and complete the rest of the problems on your own and let me know if you need any help